Hi, my name is Howard Jones and welcome to this demonstration. Um, it's of a little place, as you can see on the photo here, a um, little place called Blind Avenue, which is not a f not that far from, away from where I live in um, South Wales. Um, I want to show you uh, a couple of different techniques, but uh, most notably the fact that um, how I will choose to put detail in quite early as well as put detail in at the end and I'll give you the reasons why I do that. If you enjoy this demonstration then please do uh, remember uh, to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to ensure that you get notifications as and when I upload my new um, videos. So I hope you can sit back and enjoy this next demonstration. Now I'm going to be working today from this, let me just get this out of the plastic sheet otherwise there'll be a reflection on it. So we know that the this, this house, this property is sort of centred about here, even though I can't see that line there because it's obscured by the large tree in front here. Um, but looking at the angle on this edge, which is a bit shallower than that actually, it's about there. Um, I know that that line should be approximately there. There's this extended area of the building which seems to be on that sort of angle. Um, so there's the corner of this. In fact, the corner is about there. It seems to meet up with this extended area, extension area. There's the front end of this extension approximately here. There isn't a line there really, other than we know that the, this, this elevation meets the ground somewhere about here. So there's one thought there that this area, but th rethinking it now, yes, there is a nice tree trunk here. Um, there's some various sort of m smaller details in fact, it goes this way. I'm just getting a, getting my eye in on this now. Of course, it would it would go that way a little bit. It extend that way, um, but there are some. So the tree would be here, and the looks like there's a dog kennel or something like this here in the background. But I don't think re, rethinking this. I don't think that's enough for a focal point. So I think we'll stick with this side of the farm. Um, as our focal point. So I have three upper windows. I have another sort of, well, it seems to be a bit steeper than, another little sort of lean-to that I can't see much of, but it basically gives me something close to a, a triangle back there. My chimneys are about here somewhere. Which will do, there'll be a very small amount of perspective on on those chimneys. Slight down angle there, slight back angle there. It'll do for now. Um, and there is a conservatory, which is quite a nice shape. I think I'll go with this. Actually, everything seems to be a bit higher on this, so I think that roof comes, I'm just looking at the photo again, I think the roof is higher, it's about there, because there's less of that showing, that, uh, that, that bit there, so yeah, that's probably a bit better, it doesn't extend too far beyond that little back end shape there, so everything I draw, whenever I draw my composition up. Once I've made, once I've established something that's fairly easy to find, such as the position of this this prop, this house, um, everything else, as you saw me do, is just measured off that, measured off those uh, initial um, observations. So it's all relative to what you've put in your drawing before. Now there isn't a window on the end of this property. And as I'm not doing a commission for the owner of this property, I can do what I want, basically. I can make it look how I want it to look. 
So there is a bit of roof actually between the chimney. It's quite unusual. Bit of roof this side of the chimney. So it comes out about here somewhere. Um, right, so we have this sort of octagonal or whatever, it, pentagonal. I'm not sure what it is to be honest. There's multiple sides or facets, whatever, to this um, conservatory. And there's, there's a building here that's not particularly pretty, if I'm honest. It looks to be like a, a storage container that they're obviously using as their garden shed or something. Um, who knows, they might even be using it as a storage unit. Um, so, and then there's the telegraph posts about here. There's quite a few telegraph posts here. They're quite substantial things too. Uh, there's another one very close to it, which I find quite unusual. About here. But I, I'm including them because I think they, they will work. If I didn't like the idea that this was um, cluttered with, with what's actually in the photo, um, you know, there are three. In fact, that's a double one there um, of these verticals. One coming out of the chimney, which is probably not a good idea. So to, to stop it from coming out of the chimney, we'll move it over here. So I'll erase those little lines in a moment. So just put a line there for the, just, just so I know what I'm doing here. I can make good with paint. Just rubbing out a few of my marks that didn't work in the first place. Now I don't think that would do that, so it'll probably come off the wall like that. Make your drawing make sense. Um, so what really goes on elsewhere isn't that big of an issue, isn't that an important. Um, I can continue this shape off to the edge I think. In the background there's a hillside, there's rather a large mountain back here. Um, but we won't concern ourselves so much with that, as it's not really about what might be behind. If you can't see it, why, why paint it? You know, it's not, it, it's not playing a part in the story, so... But there is in the surrounding area of this property, a hedgerow over here, which could be useful to t for taking us to the um, to the to the to the building. So the line of the roof will be something like this, because the eye line, if we were to place a figure around here. You'd expect a figure to be that sort of height if they were inside that that conservatory somewhere around there. So, given that we're almost on the same level ground as that building, then our eye line. I'm going to go for an eye line, which is an estimation. You know, an estimate. Um, I can't be absolutely sure, but I'm looking for an eye line that will make my composition work. So I'm figuring it's about there. And, and eye lines, uh, in this say, case, the eye line is the same as the horizon line. Um, and it's, I, it's probably slightly less important in a landscape like this, um, whereas um, it's, whereas it's, um, not, it would be more important in a cityscape where I was doing geometric um, perspective lines. So I'm putting in this tree on the right hand 
side um, where the ground comes in from the right. There's a lot of softness here. And there's a shrub in the foreground which I'm not sure is that important but we'll put it in for the moment. Uh, by doing that I'll be able to keep my options open. Um, so this ground comes in something like this. So let's get some paint going and I'll keep that photo to hand. So I'm picking up, to get the painting going, I'm picking up a um, small brush, it's a size 6 round brush. And what I like to do is just to uh, establish a couple of uh, sort of hints, if you like, of detail, of some detail. My colour here is just a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So I like the idea of this is a, I've been working this way for, for a number of years now um, where I purposely go in with some detail very early uh, in the stage. I think because I'm a fan of the line. I love line work, um, pen and wash, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but there is another reason why I do it and that's because when I started painting years ago, um, I'd often put these details in at the end. Windows, doors, gates, fence, posts. And, um, and then, of course, I would uh, be applying them to dry paper. So you had all those lovely initial washes from the first stages. Um, only for this, this sort of detail to go on dry and it always looked rather static. So by putting these details in now, as long as you don't, in some areas, as long as you don't overdo the strength, um, a lot of this detail uh, will be softened as it should be. It's only really, as you, you know, and then at, at the end, of course, I, I can reestablish those things that may be disappeared too much, went too far into the paper as a result of putting wet washes on top of them afterwards. But as I say, they don't, by working this way, I put the washes on top of the detail, which has a, a, a fantastic effect of, uh, particularly the windows and the doors, of softening them, softening them into the uh, wall of the property of the, of the building, making them look less cut out and stuck on, less static. So I'm now being a little bit more careful as to how much of this that I do. Um, just making, getting my ideas from the photo from time to time. Probably a, a good idea to put something on the chimney up there, just the odd uh, incidental mark. There are some quite nice verticals on the edge of this, uh, this building here, this out, out building, storage unit, whatever. Um, and of course there will be the mullions and transoms or whatever these things are called on the conservatory building. Not too sure I want to put too much on the roof of the conservatory building at the moment. I'm getting close to having enough of this uh, detail now. So anything that I don't put in now will have to be applied at the end of the painting, which is a more traditional way of working. So there's a tree trunk here. Another one coming in from over here. Something like this. Quite a bit of burnt sienna in this. So what, what I'm doing here is I've, I, I just save these sort of little um, jar tops from pickle jars and things like that. And I use them as like a mini palette so that I can ensure that this is strong paint, a strong mix. 
that I don't over contaminate it with too much water as it might be if I were to take these paints and colours from the well of my main palette. Because the main palette, the, the wells in, in your palette will uh, collect water off the brush every time you pick up um, fresh, fresh paint. So you're not, if, if, if that happens, you'll never get this strength of paint um, on your brush. So, yeah, just, just running through areas that I think might benefit now for this sort of detail. A couple of rails to suggest a fence. It's no more than a suggestion. And if I'm not careful, I will overdo this. So we'll just have a small amount of um, another, you know, another uh, place I might just infer a little bit of detail is back here. With the, now I'm using the side of the brush. I'm scumbling a little hint of uh, uh, what's what's growing out of the ground these these lovely sort of gorse bushes that we get a lot around here they bring out a beautiful flower they flower for months almost all the way from sort of end of march right through to end of september so i don't but i don't want to make too much of them but the reason again why i'm putting these in now is because I know that when washes go over this area, these shapes will be uh, knocked back and make them look far more natural in the process. So rather than me look at my photo and think, well, you know, there's there's three little clumps here, there's two little clumps over here, there's a little cluster over there. I don't, I don't you know, there's there's obviously no 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 requirement for that. It's just to emulate the side of this hill that's in the background just to give us some idea of, of what's back there. So I'm picking up, the uh, colour I'm picking up here is it mostly with cerulean blue and a colour, um, I think it's a Winsor & Newton colour called um, lime green. So there's this slight hedgerow here. And again, I can go over this if I want more of it later, but by putting some of it in now, it keeps my, it keeps my train of thought flowing too. That's the other thing. Uh, I, I really fear, the one thing I fear is not starting in my case. You know, I, I know for a lot of people, um, starting on a blank piece of paper, it, it, it will petrify some people. It, I. I I don't have that problem personally. I have the problem of um, once I started, uh, stopping is um, really scares me. This thing because you you lose the thread once once the brain has made that shift from left to right. <laughs> um, I like to stay there until really till as much of the painting is done as possible. It's only really towards the end. Do I feel like I've sort of earned a, a, a sort of the reward of relaxing a little bit from the job in hand? Right, I'm using too small a brush now. So I'm just going to up the size of the brush to this. Oops, I just kicked my frame that I'm my camera's on. Sorry about that. And just take a, a slight respite. Let's put some raw sienna in here, a bit of cerulean blue, deliver it and then move it around. Yeah, that's too, this is too central here. So if it, if it is going to be included in my painting, I'm probably going to move it to about here. So, so let's get that going. And and this is, you know, I work very, very loose. I look, I, I work in a, an extremely abstract. I keep things as abstract as possible for as long as possible. I actually enjoy the ugly stage. And it, and because that's what it is, it's, it's we go through an ugly stage. Um, that underlying, those underlying stages where everything is just abstract are so important to the end, end result. So just 
probably a little bit through the glass of the conservatory building there. I don't think I'm going to go beyond here with the washers for the moment. Just want to get a hint of what's going on in the closer proximity. And here's what I mean. If I run over this tree trunk, um, I diffuse the edge of the tree trunk. And after all, it's in the shadow of its own canopy, that tree trunk. So why would it, you know, it, 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 it's not always going to stand out really stark and hard edged. So I can, and, and if I did feel as though the edges of this tree trunk afterwards did require um, a, a harder, <clears throat> more in focus edge, then I can simply put them in again. That's, that's the beauty of doing th these things earlier in the stage. And, and I think it's, a, well, just, I can't say this for everybody, but I find it a, a more relaxed way of working is to get some of the detail in to start off with. Right, so I've left out um, any suggestion for this big tree for the moment, but it will be about here, somewhere around there. Um, <clears throat> there was sun out on this particular occasion. The sun was out, but um, the, I don't see much evidence of shadow in the photo other than immediately underneath the trees here, which you'd expect anyway. Okay, so really uh, what I've done so far is, is a bit of detail um, and some large wash areas. Now I'm going to go into the background and the background in my photo, let me just show you again. <coughs> background in my photo is a, is, a, is a variegated array of greeny yellows. So it's probably where I'm going to go with this. The only problem is with that is that my foreground is al already sort of populated with this uh, greeny yellow colour. So I'm probably, probably going to have to go a little bluer with that in the background just to push it away from us. So a little bit of cerulean blue to start off with. Um, and then some of that paler, limey, almost sort of lemon, I suppose, uh, yellow in striations like this. And I'm only, I'm only being slightly careful not to paint over the tops of those telegraph posts. I like the idea that this, these um, additional washes are softening those shapes. So mostly a directional brush stroke here, as you can see. This is a slight slope over here. So a little bit of vertical uh, brushwork like this. And then crossed over with uh, some cerulean blue in more of a direction of the lay of the ground, the lay of the land back there. So I'm ignoring this tree at the moment that we know is sat on top of the, the canopy of the tree that sat on top of these tree trunks. Probably going to have to add another trunk in there too. These, these are a little bit sort of regimented, these two trees, tree trunks. Um, so the continuation of brightness here, I feel. So this, this is the freedom of painting um, in this fashion, is just to go with the ideas that enter your head. Don't, don't put yourself off by questioning the things that you think you should do. Just, just do them. Yes, you, I'm afraid you, you are going to have to put up with some um, bad paintings in doing this. but. It feels, may feel counterproductive, counter, counterintuitive to your personal progress. You think, well, if I do another bad painting, that means I'll, I'll never produce a good painting. Actually, it's quite, I find that it's quite the opposite, really. Um, get the bad ones out of the way. You must paint bad paintings. You must get them done. Um, get them through the system because with each bad painting you're closer to producing your your better painting and that really is um, 
you know, the way to, 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 to view it. So what I'm doing again here is replacing some of the shapes in the hillside. You see, you can still see the original underlying shapes that I made on the dry paper before I started putting the washes on. So I want a little bit more abs sense of abstract back here. It's getting, getting a little bit, it's getting a little bit um, formulaic, a little bit too regular. So there's the main wash. You notice that ev almost everything has had a, a wash or a detail. Um, and I've left the building itself white. I haven't I haven't gone into the building with any sort of wash at all. But it's time to consider that now. And I'm going to put a, a sort of cool red roof on this building. So I'm just picking up a little bit of CAD red. So a little bit of CAD red and a little bit of alizarin crimson. Let's just get a, a sort of quick, very weak, very watery. Let's go up to the chimney stacks, include those in the colour. So about there, got to be a little bit careful because the background is still, is still wet. Now that I've got this colour on here, actually, I can see that um, in the photo, if I chose to follow the photo, which I do sometimes, um, there is a little bit of redness, a little bit of extra warmth through there. So perhaps that, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Don't want to go too much red back there because red and green, of course, are opposites or complementaries, which is a bit confusing. Um, they're opposites on the color wheel. Side by side, if you don't mix them, side by side, they're complementaries. They, they sort of vibrate and complement each other, as the name suggests, but mixed. Um, if you mix the, the comp these complementaries, a green and a red, you will be pushing towards mud. You'll be going into that mud territory. So a little bit of that mud is fantastic. It shows the brighter colours off as a result. But you, nevertheless, you can do too much um, mixing of complementaries and you won't like what you end up with, basically. So once um, there's, there's also a little bit of uh, red seems to be a slightly warmer red on the um, conservatory. Um, it's obviously the structure itself, because it, although it could be a, the glass, reflected colour in the glass, so I'm just being tentatively placing some warmer colour through that conservatory about there. Also put a little bit of that warmth, same warmth, in the near end of this, um, this roof. Okay, right, and now I will need to do the roof of this little lean-to. I don't think, I'll take a little bit of the same colour that I used on the main roof for this roof here, but it'll have a bit more blue in it, a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. So it comes, about, comes in at that sort of angle, I think, about there. Okay. Getting a little bit more information around here. There's things obscuring this, and it's mostly shadow. So it wouldn't be a bad idea if I just um, placed a, a random uh, mini wash in this area here. And it is the shadow, of course, of the tree. But I'm going to get more value from that tree in terms of shadow later. It's drying off okay, but I'm going to speed dry it for the purpose of uh, keeping the momentum going. Okay, that's mostly dry, and I'm going to just pick up, um, this is just a bit of a scruff, scruffy brush. Um, I like my scruffy brushes. Often the cheaper the better. So a little bit of cerulean blue. I want it to carry, I want this to be a grey-green. 
it's about here somewhere like this maybe a little bit more cerulean blue in that might be a bit strong so I'm just going to take a So I'm just going to take a tissue to that, just to lift out a little bit, bit of extra light back there. And you know, watercolour will dry out a lot lighter of course, but within reason you don't want to, um, you've still got to keep an eye on the strength, the tonal strength of your mixes. Okay. And again, maybe just a small amount of um, of what's going on in the background again. I'm in the middle of my big tree here, so I don't really know why I put that there, but it sort of makes sense, keeps my thought process in momentum. Okay, so I'm scrubbing at this surface. Now, um, where else can I go with this? I think we ought to start thinking about the area closer to us here. So this is ultramarine blue this time with a bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of cerulean blue. And I'm thinking all the time about the strength of this mix. Yeah, that, that is a, a shadowy effect there, so I've got to probably use a bit more water in that. Otherwise it's, look, it's going to look more like a shrubby area. Let's get into there and say that's the shadow onto this sort of roof. Even this area of this roof might be... It, you know, the overhang of this tree will be about here somewhere like this, so the one it's just a shape that joins one shape joining another shape it's the shape of the overhang of this part of the tree making contact and joining the shape of this actual cast shadow that the three tree is throwing onto this little roof here but the it's very important to make these um, connected transitions between the different objects and elements that are that are making your painting up it, it it keeps this continuity, you know, sort of running through the painting. So, just going a little bit bluer. And every now and again, I just picked up a little bit of cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is very useful sometimes for in, in your shadow mixes. And offers a little bit of cool in two areas. Okay, um, there's also this area here. The more abstract you can you can provide with uh, the way you apply your brush, the way you move your brush across the surface is, is, a, you know, is an essential skill to learn, it's, um, to develop and keep developing. I, that, that's one area, if I, if I stagnate at all in, my, in the way I paint, if I get to points where I think, you know, I'm not really sort of, haven't been doing much different these days, that then it's brushwork. I, I, I always think there's room for improvement, no matter how good you think you are with the brush, um, there's always room for improvement in brush technique uh, and and I think it's overlooked a lot you know in our in our early stages but of course you know one step at a time I I think if somebody would have thrown a curveball at me when I was learning and said you know you're, you're just not sort of developing your brushwork uh, uh, and you should be I'd be thinking to probably say myself uh, that's all very well I hear what you're saying but um you know, one step at a time, let me get my washes right, let me get my colour understanding right first. It is difficult sometimes to get it all working together. Um, so my only sort of advice in that is, you know, keep working on the things that are giving you the immediate problem. Um, be, be focused in, in, in the way you learn. So I'm just scraping out, um, you know, I said there was a, some um, fence here 
Well, in the over the dark area here, which is still a bit too wet actually, but over this dark area here, I'm scraping that fence, a suggestion of the continuation of that fence there. So, might be a little bit hard of edge over here now. i just soften it with a bit more water. That's better. Okay, and that same sort of colour would be on the underside of the tree here. Now, remember we said there's two trees. I think there should be another tree trunk. So I'm going back to that number six brush that I was using when I started and putting in um, another tree trunk here. And we'll have it close to this one. So there we are. Does something like that. The rest of it disappears into the main part of the tree. So. better. A little more substance to that tree there at the bottom. Just before the bottom, before it meets the ground. Um, How is it looking? So it's still quite, you know, it's still a very loose. Um, there's still a lot of abstract element in this. So I'm going to just start, I'm going to pick up a rigger brush I think, just so that I can re-establish some line work. So there's my old rigger brush. I, I'm not sure what brand that is. It's I've had it donkey's years and uh, well it's still going. I think it might be a De La Rowney, but it probably doesn't exist anymore. I'd like to tell you where I got it from and what it's called and how much it costs, but uh, it's about 20 years old I think this brush. Um, right, okay, uh, but you can get, you know, these, these get the same thing um, from most art stores, art suppliers, you know, manufacturers like Windsor & Newton, um, ProArt. Let's go back to my little lid here. As I mentioned earlier, I was just trying to pick up some dark paint then and Really, there's too much water in my in the well of my main palette. Perhaps there's a small window about here. It's usually a a, a downpipe collecting the water from the. Um, the roof about some, somewhere around the house round here. Just once again establishing, I really like these telegraph posts. It's a great way of tying everything in. The only thing I've just noticed is they've put telegraph posts here but they, the poor people that live in this house we've, we've forgotten about, we'll put a cable down to them there and a little bit of inferred uh, detail in this foreground. Something a bit warmer. It's the odd dot here and there. I quite like the idea of this, this as it is in the photos, quite a soft, meadowy sort of natural um, field, rather than, you know, it having too much busyness and texture. And I, I, I always think, you know, it's so important to play it you know, once we've got a, once we've gone through the um, hard edges, soft edges, warm colours, cool colours, then you've got and, and dark tones, light tones. Should have started with that. Most important. Um, then you, after those three things, you've got to start thinking about texture. You know, the closer something is to you, the more textured it will be, um, and the. Um, the further away it is from us, the less texture it'll be. So this is why I'm putting in a lot of this uh, line work around here at the moment. But, and, but staying out of this because that's a soft area. There's, there's none of this. What I'm doing over this side of the foreground is, give, is suggesting a, a little bit of texture, maybe from um, what's growing out of the ground here. But here it's beautifully soft. You can almost hear the breeze, you know, just sort of skimming over the top of those wild grasses there. 
my next stage typically with me for, for a painting like this is to um, make sure I'm happy. I've got to put this tree in here. Um, but then I think I, I sort of put my shadow in where the shadow is going to go. Um, you know, I, I paint the incidental shadows while I'm painting the, the, the scene itself. But for the main shadow, for the, sh the shadow that I consider to um, offer the most, uh, uh, the best lighting effect, I save that for the end of my paintings. Nearly, that's nine times out of ten, I save it for the end of the painting. Um, so, yes, put down the small brush. Let's go back to uh, my scruffy brush. My scruffy brush has run off and left me. Scruffy brush is a really cheap thing. Um, it's like one of the sort of brushes you'd get when you're in school. Uh, so here we are, mixing up a bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson. It's giving me a sort of purpley colour because I'm thinking to form the shape of this um, large tree here, um, it's uh, it's of a sort of, I, I, I'm thinking about the shadowed side, so I don't have to go, I don't have to necessarily put limbs in this tree up here like that, though I can do it if I, if I feel as though it needs it. Um, I'd rather sort of shape it by means of um, showing the, the negative, the dark shape, the shadow shape, which will be on this side, of course, because we said the light was coming from upper right. A little bit more blue in there to show it off as a, a sort of more of a shadowy colour. And then if it goes too blue, just a tiny bit of alizarin crimson should pull it back. Now we know that there's other trees here. And that's how I connect my shapes again. I just, the bottom part of the canopy, if you come down and meet the ground too and add that colour a little bit, it's really sort of brings everything together. So that's a bit too hard an edge. So I'm picking up a lot of water, no paint, and I'll soften some of this edge here. And this is the beauty of a brush that is, is it's a cheap brush that you don't worry about. You, you, you don't, certainly don't want to be doing what I'm doing now with a, an expensive sable brush, a precious brush. Because I'm, look at it, I'm pushing the fibres of the brush. And again, you, you know, it's, um, it's brushwork, isn't it? It's back to that, how good you are with, with, it, with your brushwork. Um, I'm going to scrape. I've got all sorts of things to hand. I have whatever. Sometimes it's just my fingernail, which is, can be as good as anything. Just a, just a fingernail. Um, just to imply a, a, a few breaks in the, that darkness. Um, I've got, you know, this is a, a dental tool. Um, I've also got um, a palette knife that I sometimes use to texture flat areas. Just trying to keep it from being too flat in places. Okay, um, back to the brush. And if I overdo that, you know, if I scrape too much busyness out of here, then you know, it's simply just go back to your brush and knock them out again like this. Right, have we got enough going on here? To say, to tell our viewers what this is. This is a great big chunk of a tree. just where the light might just be revealing a bit of local colour, the colour of the leaves. So as, it, as, as, as you come out of the shadow side of the tree and move towards the illuminated area of the tree, which would be upper right, you'll, you'll see a little bit more of its colour revealed. Something like that. And that is just pure lime green going in at the moment in a scumbled fashion here, fashion here. Okay. Sometimes these trees come together for me really quickly. Other times 
um, like now, for instance, you know, I find myself needing to do a little bit of extra. They, they, they're asking a bit more of me. And um, so I go with it. Don't let it phase you. Just it's that's watercolor for you, particularly the loose style watercolor for you. You, you, you can forget your formulas and you, um, you know, embrace the serendipity. Embrace the um, the accidental. And and ex well, go one step further and exploit the serendipity and the accidental. It's a. Uh, it could be where your next best thing comes from. Uh, while we're thinking about that, just going to spatter up a little bit of texture, extra texture down here. While I'm spattering, I'm thinking about my next move sometimes, sort of. If I spatter down here in the left hand corner, a little bit of spatter up in the right hand corner creates a nice little bit of movement, diagonal movement. Diagonals are great, as long as not everything in your painting is diagonal. So there's, you know, a bit of horizontal-ish through here, there's vertical through here, and there's a bit of vertical, there's a bit of horizontal, uh, the, and there's <clears throat> a fair bit of diagonal actually, because the background up here has a, 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 a quite a, more than a hint of diagonal about it. And I've enhanced the diagonal even further by spattering up here through there a little bit and into this bottom corner. So I, you know, I have to say, I sort of paint by design. I, my design is uppermost when I paint. I don't, I don't, I'm not always thinking of how to represent um, the, the photo that I'm working from. I, I'm looking at the photo and allowing the photo to give me ideas but ideas for design rather than ideas for copying. So if that makes sense, I hope it does. Right, um, let's get this shadow on our proceedings. I think I'm going to have to go a little darker actually down here on these on those chimneys uh, have their own little shadows shadow to a certain degree there uh, right come on let's get this finished so I'm going to turn my attention to a one inch flat brush so this chap here make up a large mix of ultramarine blue I'll show you what I'm doing. I actually had some existing muck and other colours there from, from what I've been using for this painting. So because I'm using a lot of uh, one colour in this mix, I don't have to worry about that little bit of contamination. In fact, it's that little bit of contamination that makes this purple mix that I'm about to make uh, a little more believable. Once I've got that going, I had a little bit of alizarin crimson to it. So I suppose the colour, if I had to describe it, it's a sort of warmish purple, a sort of plummy purple. Let's take a, a, a test shot. So a um, couple of things you can do if you're really, really nervous about putting shadows on at the end. Because I know, for again, for a lot of people, after doing this amount of work, um, the shadows are scary enough as it is, but um, the, 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 it gets even scarier when you think, well, I've invested all this effort and time to, this, to bring it to this stage, and I quite like it as it is. You know, why, why should I spoil it, you know, or with the thought of a shadow on it? Well, it's worth it. Let me, pr I promise you that. Um, it is worth learning to paint shadows well because if you think this is good, if you get the shadows right, it absolutely transforms your paintings and has them looking far more um, sophisticated. So, um, 
providing I don't mess this one up, what I'm going to do is, yeah, sorry, I, I was saying, was if, you, if you are nervous about it, have a tissue to hand and, and choose an area on your painting where you think, well, if it does go wrong, there's no great loss here, okay? Be a sharp hedge, hedge, sorry, a sharp edge here of a turn of angle. And, and if you don't like, if you feel as if it's too dark, it's too, it's the wrong colour, then, then, Take it off with a tissue, just pull it off with a tissue. But I'm, I'm thinking that's probably, if I just use another brush and soften the strength of that shadow as it travels down away from us, I think that shadow strength there is probably about, about right. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of warmth in there before I move on with the rest of the shadow. So I'm picking up a little bit of cad red and a little bit of cadmium yellow, making me a, a sort of orange. And I'll just, I'll just say there's that little bit of warmth around in that shadow in places, particularly this closer edge here. Okay, um, so if that is receiving shadow, am um, I going to make that shadow off that chimney a bit better, I think. We'll give it that sort of shadow. Um, remember this tree here is going to throw shadow and give us a very abstract shape on the end of the house here. But before I do that, I want to put shadow where I know there's definitely going to be shadow. And I think we ought to really consider shadow across here like this, even though I put a, another shadow in from the tree there, which I, I might dare to go over. You don't really want to be painting over um, existing shadows, shadows that you put in earlier. And, and this is why I try as much as possible to reserve my shadows to the very end, because that way I know I'm not changing the colour of them too much. Um, you can overdo it, you know, uh, the issue is not so much changing the colour of them, it's, it's the fact that you, um, you, 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 you're changing the edges of things every time you paint over a shadow. So we'll go up here with the shadow, as though that's cast from the limbs of the tree itself, up here. And probably a shadow from the tree branches, something like this, over this near end. Might lose that because it looks a bit awkward there. Might lose that little bit of light, or most of it, because it looks a little distracting from, from that point of view. A bit of shadow in the window on that side. And then I would think we should see... Um, mostly shadow now in here. And, you know, use a second brush if you have to, just to soften. Now, in my photo, the roof of that conservatory is, is light. And I can understand why, you know, as the building, uh, sorry, as the roof of the house itself is much lighter. Um, but um, I'm looking at it now and thinking, it doesn't really work for me. So I'm going to try, and I'll have my tissue ready if I don't like it, but I'm going to try shadowing that side of it at least, and then giving myself yet another little smaller abstract shape over there. So only part of that roof, that little uh, conservatory roof, is, is uh, shadowed. I take a little light, bounced light off that edge up against the wall of the house itself. Okay, um, now I can relax more or less. Uh, I can say that this is in shadow down here. A um, little bit of shadow over there. I should really change the strength of that mix for that, for that distance over there. So I'll just put a bit of water with that. lose that. We'll just soften the end of the building into the background just about there. Uh, and I really, now I'm realizing that um, I think we need 
the same shadow colour in areas of this, particularly here. I'll make contact with the house a bit more too, I think. That would be better. So, some limbs that actually come out from the tree. That's better. It's all getting a little bit, um, it's all getting a little bit confined and restricted to its own space, wasn't it, over here? So, we can say that this lovely tree is sent out. I'll go a bit too mad if I'm not careful. And a little bit of extra darkness here, here, here. In there, maybe. Okay. Let's have a look at how we might simplify this. It's a little bit busy for my liking. So, what I'm going to do is um, lose some of the busyness. So I'm going to say that uh, the shadow is on the mountain back here, which will flatten a lot of that. There's some nice abstract edge up here. All comes together at the end. If you can, if you can, if you can develop the confidence of applying shadows. You can rely on a good finish to your paintings. And then that can travel maybe up here and meet the shadow in, that's in the background a little bit there. These are just really very abstract ideas coming in now, things that are not there, but I feel will help uh, make the painting work. Always a danger of overworking, of course. I think we're almost there. That's probably in need of a little further Simplifying top of that tree here, so that'll give us a nice little area of this tree that's coming towards us. Always thinking in the three dimension. Always thinking in in terms of distance. Every object is away from us. Just thinking out the final the final bits here. So I think. This area here is just a little too bright, so it's just a, da just a brush with a bit of water in it and I'm sort of helping that exist, the, the, the bit of paint that's around here, just moving it around a little bit. Which helps us concentrate more on this and this. The focal point territory is this area here and it is a bit central um, but it, it's in balance it's still in balance especially if I mean if I just sort of put the odd I suggest that they've stored something across the top of this storage container here it will certainly bring some um, balance back over here Yeah, okay. So this is just white gouache straight out of the tube here. Just put it down here so you can see what I'm doing. I'll just add a little bit of summer to this. 
those lovely, those seed heads, those... those little insects that come out in the sun. A little on the rigger brush. Just adding a bit to the abstract. And I think we'll call that a done job. There, let's put the mount around it and see what we've got. So there's my painting of the little farm building. I think it's a farm building, um, not far from me, called Blynavon. Um, Blynavon famous for its uh, mining. It has, um, it still has a, a museum, a coal mining uh, attraction there that, you, that people can visit, um, showing the amazing history of the Welsh coal mining industry. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and uh, see you at the next one.